the uh, special that we had yesterday went down well was the ham with um, egg just slightly fried on an on English muffin. It seemed to go down pretty well. Oh, yeah. We've got um, four stars on the trip review, so we're <laughs> going to go again. In 2016, we bought a boat we aptly called Mood Swings, with the first trip planned to Princess Charlotte Bay. Well, soon after, our fishing course business took off and a dodgy boat repairer got in the way, so now it's 2021 and we're finally doing that trip. Hi, I'm Ryan Moody, this is my wife Karen, our two sea dogs, my mate Everett, and our fishing machine, the Blue Boat. Subscribe and welcome aboard as we visit some amazing remote locations, have a few dramas and catch some great fish on our northern Australian adventure from Cairns to Princess Charlotte Bay. We've just stopped anchor and we've prepped the boat, we've got it out the back. We only tow out the back when it's choppy and when it's nice and calm we put it alongside but it's just not worth it. I can see the big white caps from here in the channel. So we've just put her out the back, got the boat prepped, hatch is shut. All those little bits and pieces, and uh, off we go. Righto, getting ready now to head over to the beach. Dogs a walk, and check out a few little likely areas. Looks like a uh, possibility of a crocodile slide. slide on the beach here, so we're just going to inspect it first. And um, just be a little bit wary because we are in croc country now. We're just going to grab a few liveies. We might just chuck them off the back of the boat at night. Bit of a rubbly bottom out there. We might pick up a finger mark or a big grunter or something. But the best thing is, you don't have to go far to catch liveies here. Basically, get out of the boat and throw it right next to it. Step, step. Grover, that's it. <laughs> now that's what you call a net full of mullet. <laughs> I don't think we need all these, we'll let some of these go. But we've kept about 30 odd, put them in the tanks, let the rest go, there's no injured. Got them back as quick as we could, job's done. Time to leave the endless school of mullet and head out and have a look at the headlands and see what opportunities they presented. After checking them out through the falling tide, we hardly saw any barramundi whatsoever, but there was enough cod and trevally to keep us occupied. While not our target species, they were still a bunch of fun. Do you prefer boat casters or spin? I don't forget to ask. Oh, I, I don't. I don't mind both. I'm, I'm adapted. Oh, I got a hit. Oh! And again. Ah! 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 Nice GT. Yes. Yeah, nice little GT. Good fun. Nice little one for Everett. Little GT on our scale blazer. Plenty of them up here. Oh, oh, it's a cod master! <laughs> Who else would you get but the cod father? That's it. <laughs> I love the good sign. Yeah, there's things like jewies and yeah, finger marks are going to come through this area tonight. Oh, we're in the perfect spot for a fish tonight, right off the back of the boat. I'll get the game door open and uh, we'll pull them in through here. Well, today was more of a relaxed and fun day. We didn't do a whole lot of fishing. Didn't see too many barrows on the sounder, but had a great time exploring the beaches and headlands. I'm looking forward to some more serious fishing tomorrow as we head up towards the Mara River and see what kind of action we can find ourselves up there. This morning, we've moved up closer to the mouth of the Marat River in a nice little anchorage. Had a massive ground swell come in with the high tide last night in the big southeaster. So today we're just going to have a look up the Marat. Who knows, we might even get over to um, a couple of the other rivers just yet, we don't know. But um, mainly going to have a look at the Marat first. Norman be tomorrow and present the next day with a bit of luck. So let's go and see what the barrows are up to. Okay, we're just arriving to the Marat River. Start to have a bit of a look around and uh, see if we can find some of those big silver things with pink eyes. Tides are still a little bit largish, but uh, hopefully around the turn of the tide we'll get them in aggregation mode. Right now, we've got a bunch of threadies through here, so we're going to use the pillages on them. Barras are a little bit patchy on all the holding points, so we're going to concentrate on the threadies today. And the tides do get better in the next couple of days for the barra. Uh, today I'm using the uh, the green pillager, the herring. It's a little pattern. 
and I've got the gold on there for Everett, gold and black. And uh, I do like to use the, the blues and that as well, but I mostly use them in cleaner water and the uh, Corners colors. So these guys here, a little bit more suited to the estuary um, kind of environment. So um, working a treat on the blues and uh, we just want to get a few different species now. There's a few threadies cruising around. Barras are a little bit light on, but I'm hoping that something will happen uh, as this tide backs off. I've seen a couple sitting here, so we'll give them a go then. Dead weight, might be a cod. Oh, it's a, it's a rock. Cod master's a rock master. <laughs> <laughs> Just keeps getting better and better. <laughs> Swimming up current, it's ready. What size have we got? Oh no, it's a bluey, this one. Get him on board. There we go, on the pillager. Nice little, uh, they're a great little fish though. A lot of people don't like them too much, but you eat these fresh, they're good, but we've got better fish back on the boat, so we'll let him go. Back off a bit, we might be in for a bit more luck. What do we got this time? Yeah, another little bluey. There's a lot of them down there amongst the threadies. Using this new custom rod Ronnie Farron made me. What am I going to give away now? Barra Basics community. Right, I get him on board. Another one on the pillager. Using the green and gold. Yeah, there's a few good thread fit coming through here now. Out on the flats. Seen one barra, but I'm hoping as the tide slows down, we might get a little bit more action on them. Oh, the blueies are a bit relentless so far. The gold pillager. I'm not taking any chances being remote. Crimping out, crimping out barbs and not grabbing them by the mouth when they're in a risky situation. Another one on the pillager. Come on, threadies. The blues love them anyway. The blues are, that's right. <laughs> well, it was quite obvious to us after a while that our lures were not gonna reach the threadfin salmon as the blues were just so thick. So it was time to head out towards the mouth of the river and check out a few likely looking spots out there and hopefully we'll find some finger mark or barra. All right, hey, another one on the pillager. Little fella, don't know what he is yet. Plenty of uh, fly tackle sport fishing available here at the, at the moment, that's for sure. Yeah, not a bluey. Come on, let your bigger cousins have a crack. It's always the wave, the threadies are off the chew. These things will keep biting. There we go. Thanks, champ. Another bluey. Leave us alone. Uh, don't know. Yeah, he's going for a run. Be nice to think if it was a threaty, but <laughs> we've had that many blues come through in amongst them. Yeah, it's a blue, just a bigger blue. Yeah. Oh, these, these taste rather nice, fresh. They're fresh, they're good, they're good. You want to try one? You've never tried one, babe, have you? They're a very good sports fish. Better size blue. Bought these to about six, seven kilos down in the Horton years ago. Yes. Another one on the pillager. See the fella. Off he goes. None the wiser. Let's catch another blue. <laughs> Just everywhere. There's about six flying around my lure then. That's insane. But anyway, it's good fun. At least yeah, that's <laughs> the barrows might be a bit tough going, but hey, at least we're catching some fish. It's full on. Everywhere we've been, it's just been full on every time we've been fishing. Yep. With a finger mark and all that too. Yeah. That's right. That's right. And if the barrow fishing goes a bit slow, mate, well, we'll. Well, we'll do the wonkies on the way home because we couldn't really fish for them on the way up with the yep. finfish closure. We'll catch some nannies and trout maybe. Oh, just another blue salmon. We got the blue salmon blues. There's gotta be more. 
<laughs> we gotta get through them eventually. Oh dear. Yeah. <sighs> Real. Threadies are a bit more touchy than these things. They can go through periods where they don't bite, but these things don't stop. Just go, go, go all the time. Anyway, another bluey. Roxy reckons the blue salmon blues too. See you, buddy. I wonder what the next fish I'm going to catch is. Oh, a little finger mark. Wow. There you go. Thought we'd put a livey out to see if uh, we could track something different. And we have some nice little shell grit rubbly bottom here, so that's probably why he's hanging around. Mm. Only a little fella though. You'd be happy with him in Darwin, I tell you. Yeah, yeah, it's funny how the goalies up there are a lot smaller than over here, eh? Definitely, yeah. Okay, fine. See you, buddy. I'm so surprised that little mullet there hasn't been smashed because back home, whenever the blues are around, you can't keep a mullet down there. And they're just leaving it alone and smacking these things. Are these lures just that good or what? <laughs> yeah, just more blue salmon. They're just absolutely everywhere. You got one on two? One on two. And about 30 followed him up. I didn't expect this coming up here. Wow, I've never seen them. Never ever in my life have I seen, seen them this thick, no. Insane. Bluey. Not a bad one. Yep. Good work, mate. Yeah, thank are, you, you. are you getting sick of it though? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to get sore arms, but oh, it's, cool. it's fun though, it's fun. Well, somehow I think this is just another blue salmon. Unreal. From the new custom rod Ronnie Farron made for me. We're actually raffling off one of these, well not raffling it, we've got a secret length competition in our Barra Basics group for the month of October. Here it comes. They go well for s small fish, don't they? Honestly. A few years ago, I had Barry Michaels and a few boys up from Melbourne and we caught some threadies and a few nice blues and we cooked them up. And I didn't tell the boys which was which. And they were fresh, of course. And uh, most of the lads picked the blue to be the best out of the two. So Karen's never eaten one. So we might take one back to the boat and cook him up for lunch. Okay, you probably heard me talking about these things being in plague proportions, different parts of the country. Many people sometimes think that they've, they've put big mullet out for uh, big barramundi and they've come back scaled and they've, the rod's just bent over and it's come back scaled. But what it is, it's actually these things trying to get a big mullet down because they've got the same kind of gums as a barramundi. So you get the same kind of scaling effect down the, your bait. So. A lot of people go home thinking they've lost 20 big barra for the day, but it's just been blue salmon grabbing their baits and trying to swallow them, but they can't. So maybe that's happened to you, who knows? Well, that was a mad session. Yeah, it was cool on the uh, blue salmons again. Three spots and we just can't get through the blues. It's insane. It's, it's making our fishing very difficult because there's some nice reddies here and there too, but they're just not getting the chance to to get through the plagues of yeah. blues. We got the blue salmon blues. And we could see them they were sitting together as well, some really good threadies. Yeah. But they didn't want to play today. That's it. So it's lunchtime, it's getting a bit hot, the dogs are feeling it a bit. So we're gonna head back to the boat, raft up, and we're gonna head, I'm gonna skip the Norman Bee. I'm gonna go to the Byzant, get right away from this area. Yeah. There's not many barras here. I'm surprised all that luring we've done along the flats, didn't even see one. Yeah. Nothing on the side imager. We've what, seen two little barras yeah. just in a couple of locations. So. Yeah, that cold water and strong southeast has really uh, nailed us, I think. So anyway, well, another river tomorrow. Yeah. Well, you're never too old or experienced to get taught a new lesson. <laughs> Today we got smashed here by the blue salmon. Uh, and there's not many barrows around. We got really strong winds and high barometer, so um, we don't expect the barrow fishing to be very good. We only saw three on the sounder all day in the areas that we went. So I was trying to get away from this area. This afternoon, we made our way up to um, towards the um, Byzant because we were going to fish way up there tomorrow. But unfortunately, the 15 to 20 knot southeast to easterly forecast 
turned into a 30 knot northeasterly. Well, it wasn't northeasterly, it was still easterly, but the small groundswell that comes around the corner, by well, the time you're that far down in the bay here, with that 30 knots behind it, it builds the groundswell. So we tried to, we went down there and it was slowly picking up as we went. I thought I could tuck in close enough, but no. So we anchored up and we had the crosswind of the ground swell, so we're all over the place. We weren't gonna get a good night's sleep. The blue boat was copping a smashing. So we had to make our way all the way back up here. So anyway, lesson learnt about Princess Charlotte Bay and also forecasts. They're only forecasts and that's all they are. <laughs> Join us in the next episode as we continue on our Northern adventure. In the meantime, for fishing tips, workshops and fish finder tuition, visit our website, Ryan Moody Fishing. A link to the gear and tackle used on this trip is below the video, plus a link to our ship's log. To follow along here for the rest of the trip, please like and subscribe and we will catch you in the next episode.